Project Hyper Pi releasing their brand new image that'll work for the Raspberry Pi B Plus. Way better performance because this thing is more optimized as well as the B Plus is a little faster. So in this video, let's go ahead and set up our own image so you can set up your own image and then we'll check out the different views and the different things you can do with this beautiful attract mode. Project Hyper Pi, latest version for the Raspberry Pi B Plus. In the past, it did not work for the B Plus, and now we have it. So it'll be interesting to see. It's going to be on, that means it's going to be RetroPie 4.4, which is great for not only the latest and the greatest of everything, but also it's going to run a little better. Already looking pretty good. Already has, oh, okay, it has all the. Duke Nukem has a bunch of ports installed already. Mario Love. So it comes with a couple of things pre-installed. All right, so here it is. Let's go ahead and go to RetroPie very quick. All right, so you got just your basic stuff here and then a track mode, which you all wanna see. Before we get to that, you're either gonna set up your Wi-Fi or hook up to a LAN connection and transfer over your ROM. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So on the left side here, I have the HyperPi 2 Media Pack, and basically that's all the images and, and video snaps and everything you're gonna want for HyperPi. Now HyperPi is a little different than like Motion Blue and some other things because it has that advanced uh, attract mode. It uses a few more images, like uh, different types of box art and things like that, and screenshots. So I highly recommend you go with their Media Pack. And you can see I've already extracted the Atari 2600 Neo Geo NES and SNES. So that's all I'm going to be doing for this particular image is doing these four systems just to get this set up. And then on the right side here, I have my Raspberry Pi connected to the internet. And then here we go. We have our different systems. So Atari 2600, Atari 2600. We're just going to go Control A here, Control C, and then Control V. And we're going to go ahead and transfer that over. It's about a gigabyte. And because we're on the Raspberry Pi B+, Plus, it'll be a little bit quicker. If we were on the Raspberry Pi 3, this would take a long time. Uh, but luckily, we're on this network. So uh, basically, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Neo Geo, NES, and SNES. All right. So I just transferred all four of the media files. And then now you just need a ROM pack. I'm using the Weird Dirty Gaming's 250 ROM pack. There's a ton of ROM packs. You can just get a ROM pack for the particular system. So I don't need the box art or any of that because I just did the, the media. I already did all this with the HyperPy pack. So I just need all these files here. So I'm just gonna hold Shift, Control C. And then now I need to go back to Atari over here on my Pi. And then Control V. So I did all my artwork and now I'm just doing the games. The next thing I'm gonna do is Neo Geo. Again, I just need the ROMs. Don't need... I actually do not wanna replace the game list. So I'm gonna have to go back and do the game list. I'm gonna keep the HyperPi game list. Okay, Neo Geo. All right, I'm gonna do this for all four systems. All right, all done on the computer. Now let's go back to the Pi. On the Pi here, we're just gonna restart it. Here we are, and now Atari 2600. We should have pictures and video snaps. Super Nintendo as well. We're an emulation station so we can search. And this is all fairly typical. And let's go ahead and switch to a track mode. So all displays just does everything, every single system, right? A lot, a lot, a lot in there. We can go back, and you can actually go by a nested system here, arcades, consoles. So this is where our consoles are going to be, collections, packs, system info, theme gallery, exit track mode. As you saw, the menu goes smaller, which is really nice. And uh, I really like this, the track mode setup, it looks great. Um, no other front end is like this in my mind for the retro pie. So really cool, um, easy to go around, cool tokens, you know, the animations are nice. It's just really well thought out. As far as lagginess, I mean, it's, it's a huge, 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 huge improvement on the Raspberry Pi P Plus, um, as well as I'm sure they've made other optimizations 
well. So the combination of the extra 0.2 gigahertz and the um, and the optimization in the software is running really good. So remember, we transferred over Super Nintendo and all of our ROMs. So let's take Super Nintendo, for example. This is the stock view here. I'm going to go ahead and hit my trigger, and I'm going to go to controls, and I'm going to go ahead and bind my control for um, toggle layout. Oh, I've already done that. It's my trigger. So toggle layout, you're going to see, I'm going to go ahead and go back now, and then I'm going to hit it. So right now I have a vertical scroll with a menu that goes to the right. Okay, there you go. So this changes my view here to the logo view on the right. Similar view with the metadata on the right. Do it one more time. Right now we're just toggling between. This is like a closer up look. And as you see, still a vertical menu. Do that again. All right, now we're on the horizontal menu. Pretty cool. And as you see, it's it's pretty snappy. It's not that slow, especially for a little Raspberry Pi. Try another one. All right, now we're back to here. All right, now we have a like an attract mode wheel, and with wheel art, and the wheel fades away. Pretty cool. Jump to the game here. This is one of the first attract mode builds where I haven't run into that many issues. Looking good. Hit it again here. Now we got the vertical again. This is pretty cool, button mode. Attract mode. Wheel. And then standard. You can change the, oh, there we go, vertical. You can change the, uh, the menus here as well. The vertical. And then standard. Let's go to consoles here. You can change the console view to the screen as well. And then back to normal. Um, remember, so we did Atari 2600, we added all the ROMs as well. Oh, this is an interesting full screen. Change that up. And you got the wheel. Change it up again. And we have standard. Change it up again. And we got the vertical. Change it up again. Vertical large video. I mean, a horizontal. Back to the standard with the bigger. All right, track mode. Wheel. All right, and back. Pretty cool. Um, let's try. We did uh, Neo Geo as well. Let's do Neo Geo. And here's our game. Go ahead and change the view here. So there you have it, HyperPi, the latest version. It's definitely getting better and better. I know a lot of people had some issues with the previous build, especially for the Pi. It was a little laggy. There were some you know, things that weren't quite perfect. Um, but it's cool to see that they're definitely working on it heavily. Um, some things I noticed that were missing was it no longer had the cover flow. I wasn't able to get to that mode. Maybe I just didn't uh, configure a button to get to it, but maybe they took that out because it was a little glitchy or laggy. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, here's the attract mode setup area, and this is something that's fully operational now. I had a lot of issues with it in the past, but now all these scripts were working, so that's really good. That's a big bonus to have all these things available to you in attract mode because it makes attract mode less intimidating for newbies. Now, as far as the um, attract mode itself, it's very blingy, and I, I would love it for a bar top or an arcade build or something kind of flashy. It's really cool. But I know a lot of you might also want like a really simple look as well. So for those of you, you can add and, and install and switch out on many, many different types of themes uh, in this particular attract mode. So you're not stuck 
with just the stock hyperpi 2 um, theme so you have a lot a lot of choices there a lot of editing a lot of things you can do so that part is totally customizable i just didn't do that in this video because this video i just wanted to set it up and show you how it looks now here launching a game it's all working well so the whole thing once you set it up is working very well um, overall i'm gonna have to give this a thumbs up you know it's great when we have more options out there and it's also great when developers continue to support their software because as we're seeing you know a lot of the old raspberry pi 4.3 stuff a lot of people are switching to the new Raspberry Pi B+, Plus, thus making a lot of that stuff obsolete or just people want the new. And so with all that said, this is really great that we have something new and it's running. Overall, thumbs up on my end. Let me know what you guys think. That's what I think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, I don't think I'm going to make it, guys. Oh!